All right, it's winter time, it's cold, and the number one concern people have is, how do I prevent or get rid of this insufferable, dry, cracked skin? Whether it be on your legs, your arms, your entire body, your hands, your feet, your face, dry skin, it is a winter issue for sure, although it can pop up any time of the year. This is the video for you. Chances are your moisturizer isn't bad, but maybe there's something you could be leaning into more to really get you over the hump of dry cracked skin. It's an unglamorous ingredient, but it gets the job done. It's probably something you already have on hand. So good news, you don't need to buy anything. Winter is basically the perfect storm for dry cracked skin because a lot of things in winter are not so great for your skin barrier. Cold outdoor air holds very little moisture and therefore more water leaves your skin. Not to mention indoor heating dries out the air even more. Throw in long hot showers, frequent cleansing, and overdoing it with exfoliating. Yeah, that is a recipe for an impaired skin barrier, transepidermal water loss, dryness, flaking, cracked skin, and discomfort. And with that also comes itch, you start scratching, it disrupts your sleep, you get stressed out because you're not sleeping well, the stress fuels the itch, you scratch more, more barrier impairment. I mean, it is a vicious cycle of dry, cracked skin and winter itch. This is why your skin starts to feel tight, dry. And I want to clarify something up front. Oily skin does not mean moisturized skin. Sebum, aka oil, is not that moisturizing. And I tell people this and they're like, huh, huh, huh? If you don't believe me, look at a two-year-old. A two-year-old has like zero sebum, okay? They don't have any sebum, but is their skin dry? Most of the time, no, okay? Good skin barrier. But with age and environmental exposures, our skin barrier becomes challenged. Sebum doesn't really correct the skin barrier and having an impaired skin barrier means you're losing more water and that's why the skin becomes dry. It loses water. When the water content drops, well, then the skin's ability to mature and maintain barrier function properly and turn over and naturally exfoliate, all that kind of goes wonky because the enzymes that do that need water in order to optimally function. The ingredient most people overlook for dry winter skin, probably because it's not sexy or because it has a bad rap, but it is a go-to recommendation from dermatologists, myself included, and that is, yeah, you guessed it, petrolatum. It's one of the most effective skincare ingredients, not only for protecting the skin barrier, for reducing transepidermal water loss, but for a allowing your skin to heal from the winter elements and to get back on track to staying hydrated on its own. Petrolatum is what we call an occlusive. That means it sits on top of the skin to create a film to reduce the loss of water from the skin as well as to protect the skin from irritants. While it doesn't contain any humectants per se, by sitting on the surface of the skin and creating that watertight seal, it ultimately, indirectly, we'll say, helps to improve water content because well, it reduces the loss of water. And in contrast to other skin protectants, which are aimed at doing the same thing, petrolatum not only decreases transepidermal water loss the greatest, but it has the best longevity on the skin. Meaning if you put petroleum jelly on the skin, it'll stay there working in your favor for a lot longer in comparison to other things. It resists removal with water. It won't last indefinitely, but it will buy you the most long lasting reduction in transepidermal water loss, which is exactly what you need when your barrier is impaired. There are a few other great properties of petroleum jelly that get overlooked or dismissed as not being that important when they are really helpful features. And that is it's chemically inert. It doesn't degrade. Petroleum jelly, straight petroleum jelly, that is 100% aka Vaseline, it has a long shelf life. It has zero water in it. So it's not going to become contaminated with bacteria. It doesn't require any preservatives because nothing is going to grow in it. It's extremely, extremely stable in contrast to maybe oils, which depending on the oil, of course, could oxidize and become more inflammatory. Petroleum jelly is something that the immune system doesn't really care about, which is fantastic because when you have an impaired barrier, your immune system is on the defense and you're a lot more likely to mount allergic reactions to things that you're putting on the skin. So petroleum jelly is actually the safest thing to use in these situations. It's one of the reasons why we recommend people who are dealing dealing with really stubborn chapped lips to just use petroleum jelly because a lot of times the stubborn chapped lips may be due to something that they're allergic to or irritated by in that lip balm that they keep putting on and they need to stop, stop using it and put on just plain petroleum jelly. It's used on babies. It's used on people who have different types of eczemas. We use it after dermatologic procedures to heal wounds. It's a go-to recommendation for healing cuts and scrapes. I mean, it really does a lot for the skin under 
underrated. Well, why shouldn't I just use a lotion? One of the reasons why lotion may not be cutting it for your winter skincare routine is that it's not quite occlusive enough. Maybe you're relying too much on hydrating ingredients, but your barrier is impaired, so you're losing a lot of moisture. So a lightweight lotion, it might just not be enough to cut it. Or it may be a better option as maintenance, but to get the barrier back on track, you might benefit from leaning more into petroleum jelly. A lot of people look for ingredients that help to replenish moisture, but fail to lean into something that can help trap the moisture there in the first place, petroleum jelly. Now, to be clear, petroleum jelly is not the only occlusive ingredient available. However, it is the best, without a doubt. But you will hear a lot of myths about petroleum jelly that I think keep people from feeling comfortable using it. The first is that petroleum jelly clogs pores, and it absolutely does not. In fact, theoretically, it can help reduce pore clogging because again, it helps to improve water content in the epidermis. Ultimately, that's gonna allow the skin lining your pores to turn over more efficiently, reducing the likelihood of comedo formation. Pure petroleum jelly that is used in skincare products, it is not going to clog your pores. It is truly non-comedogenic. Second myth I hear is that it doesn't allow the skin to breathe. Uh, your skin, guess what? It is not responsible for respiration. There, there's no alveoli in the skin to exchange gases. Okay, so you don't necessarily need to worry about that. Although I say that with the caveat in that there are certain skin conditions where you do want air to circulate over the skin and wearing something occlusive like petroleum jelly can maybe jeopardize what it is you're seeking to correct. Namely, in the case of heat rash, petroleum jelly can aggravate heat rash. But for the winter, we're assuming that we're not dealing with heat rash, aka prickly heat or miliaria. If you are dealing with that, check out my videos on it. I give a lot of tips and tricks on how to get over it. The other myth I hear is that petroleum jelly doesn't actually moisturize your skin, right? I mean, it doesn't have humectant, so how is it gonna improve water content? It improves water content by keeping it there, keeping it from evaporating. So sure, you won't get instant plumping, but when you use it consistently, the water content will improve. The result, moisturized skin. Finally, the biggest myth is that it is toxic because it is derived from petrochemicals. Petroleum jelly is highly refined, highly purified, and it's chemically inert. And like I said, very safe to use. For example, if you, God forbid, are to sustain a severe thermal burn, you end up in the hospital, they're gonna be putting petroleum jelly on your skin at some point. But here's how I recommend using petroleum jelly in real life, especially in the winter months to get things back on track. Really lean into it at nighttime as your nighttime moisturizer. Ideally, you put it on slightly damp skin and comment below on if you've ever done this little hack that I recommend. When you get out of the shower and the skin is still a bit damp, like they're little tiny water droplets, you kind of pat the excess of those off and then you start smearing the Vaseline petroleum jelly on like your leg, for example, and it kind of works into a creamy lather with those little flecks of water still on the skin. Alternatively, for your face, you might elect to use a thin layer of petroleum jelly to your entire face as the final step in your nighttime skincare routine. This is commonly referred to as slugging and it can really be a fantastic option for turning things around for you as far as your skin barrier. This works especially well if you have developed dry, irritated, sensitive skin from using say a topical retinoid or an exfoliant. It also can be very helpful if you have developed dryness of the skin related to certain topical treatments like acne treatments. Petrolatum can also be super helpful to certain targets areas, especially the lips, which don't have really any protective stratum corneum and are a lot more vulnerable to dryness and irritation. It can be great around the eyelids. No, it does not cause milia. And it also can be fantastic to your feet, especially if you cover with socks to really trap it there in place and not get all over the floor. That'll really help correct dry crack feet. It's also underrated for your nails because it helps to improve the watertight seal of the nail folds, limiting access of moisture into the nail, which would lead to nail ridging and brittleness. It's great for eczema prone skin. If you've just had some sort of procedure, petroleum jelly is great to put on the skin because again, it's inert. And it's fantastic if you live in a cold, dry climate and you struggle with windburn, chapped skin. Wonderful for dry, cracked hands. Put it on and then cover your hands with cotton gloves. Sit that way for at least an hour, if not overnight. Wow, it really can help with the dry, cracked hands tremendously. How do you choose a product? Well, when it comes to choosing a product with petroleum jelly, you have a few options. You can go 
go with a petroleum jelly based ointment, either 100% petroleum jelly or an ointment that is majority petroleum jelly, like Aquaphor healing ointment or CeraVe healing ointment. Admittedly, these do feel a bit greasy on the skin. Maybe you're not comfortable with that. However, I also suggest taking a look at certain moisturizers. One thing I've noticed over the years is that moisturizers marketed for body, like body creams, body lotions, they more often than not have petrolatum in them, as opposed to their facial counterparts tend to lean into more of dimethicone, for example, because it doesn't feel as greasy on the skin and they know that consumers maybe don't like the greasy feel. But at the same time, many consumers are seeking a rich night cream, right? Especially once you get into your 40s and thereafter, or for women in particular, our skin's ability to retain moisture is less than it once was. And we maybe need a little bit more as far as the richness in our moisturizer. I always suggest people try using your body cream or your body lotion on your face. A lot of times they have petroleum jelly and people are scared like, isn't it gonna clog my pores? No, petroleum jelly doesn't clog pores. It won't clog your pores or cause milia or anything of that sort. And it's also often a lot more cost effective to just use a body cream that you're using on your body to your face, like one and done kind of a thing. Now, if your skin barrier is compromised, I do suggest avoiding added fragrances as these are common allergens. And like I said, when your skin barrier is impaired, your, your immune system is a bit more, you know, likely to rebel. All that to say, yeah, petroleum jelly is fantastic. Is it safe to use petroleum jelly on the face if you have acne? Yes, it is. In fact, studies show that petroleum jelly to the face has been shown to actually decrease the number of acne spots that people with acne get. And like I said, this could be particularly helpful for people with acne who are experiencing a lot of dryness, sensitivity, and irritation from their topical acne medications. It can really help them to get over that and allow them to tolerate their topical medications better. It does not clog pores and is safe to use. All right, you guys, that is the underrated winter skincare hero I want to talk about. I often find myself doing a video like this in the winter because I think it's a good time to remind people of how underrated petroleum jelly is, how it really can benefit you in your skincare routine, especially in the winter months. It's a cost-effective ingredient. It may not sound sexy, but it works. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.